Version 2s of rebuildable tank atomizers that made a big impact on the industry. Now, we've, we've seen, you don't generally tend to see a lot of V2 tanks. Think about it. Back in about 2017, 2018, beginning of 2019, we've seen a lot of V2 tanks coming out. But if you think about what happened halfway through 2019 going into this year, there isn't as many V2 tanks coming out. Have any, has anyone noticed that? V2s generally tend to be released when it comes to drippers, but when it comes to RTAs, very rarely when a major tank release comes out do a, does a company think about doing a V2 tank, unless, for all I know, they could be planning to release a whole bunch of V2 tanks at the end of this year. I don't know, but what we're looking at today is this. It's the version 2 of the Dead Rabbit RTA. Now, I didn't even know this was being released until Helvey sent me an email. It was like, Vic, Vic, we've got the V2 of the Dead Rabbit RTA. Do you fancy reviewing it? And I was like, what? What? That Billy hasn't released a video for about fucking five months now. I, I was expecting Billy to bring out like what he usually does, bring out an introduction video for the tank, but... There's been no video in Billy's channel, at least up until the point of recording this review. There's been no re there's been no video at all on Billy's channel announcing the release of the uh, Hell Vape and uh, Vape and Heathen um, Dead Rabbit RTA V2. Absolutely none. So when news came out of this, I was kind of surprised, thinking to myself, what are they going to do to make the V2 better than the V1? And that's the big question right there. But before we answer that question, by the way, if you're noticing a bit of a difference in the light, a bit of a difference in the video, I've changed the lighting around. That's why it's looking a lot different to what it was looking like last week. And to me, it looks a lot better as well. But anyway, before we answer that question, let's have a look at the up close, the personal, and the tech specs for this tank review. Dead Bunny version 1.2, oh, 1.3, oh no that's right, it's version 2, uh, the Dead Bunny version 2 RTA, um, I, I'm not sure about this, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure about this, um, comparing the Dead, well you can see it when we open the thing up right, but the original Dead Rabbit V1 RTA does look, does look different than the V2. There's no getting around it. The outside of the tank has altered its looks. It definitely has altered its looks. Starting at the very top here, we do of course have our 810 connected 
press fit based, uh, press fit based drip tip. We also have a little arrow there, push it, and it's a slide fill system. Slide fill system. Now, here's the interesting part. You can also unscrew the top and get in to the actual slide mechanism, which is something you can't normally do with these slide top fill tanks. It means you can get in there for a deep clean if you're popping this in an ultrasonic cleaner or something, because the whole top part actually does come off. That is a good, that is a good thing, a very good thing, because normally with a lot of these slide top fills, you cannot get in to the top section of the fill port to actually clean everything out. And as you can see, the whole thing strips down. Just like that, the whole thing strips down. So that is a good thing. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that, that they actually made it so the whole top part can strip down so you can actually clean things up. Let's put this back together again. There we go, so fill in it, push it along the top. There's your fill port there. Then you've got the top side airflow, because again, it's dead rabbit, which means the air's going to come down here like that at an angle. It is fully adjustable, as you would expect. There we go. One airflow there, another airflow there. Little bit of knurling going on. You've got the dead bunny logo on the main chamber, and then dead rabbit version two. There's your main tank. Down here at the base, you have got some kind of plastic acrylic thing in here. Don't vape in a bin, CE Mark Hell Vape Dead Rabbit V2 RTA. Did you notice something here? Did you notice something? Vaping Heathen's name is not on the tank. Because from what I remember in the old in the old V1, his name was down here and his logo. This time it's not. This time it's not. In fact, the only place you will see Heathen's name is in a very small logo on the back of the box. It's almost as if Heathen didn't actually have anything to do with this tank, but Hellvape slapped his name on it anyway. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, the most important part, let's have a look inside and see what the hell's going on in here, shall we? So, you've got the main chamber, which, to be honest, hasn't actually changed all that much from the original Dead Rabbit V1. They have, well, Dead Rabbit V1 RTA, that is. They have altered the air intakes as it goes in. Did I clean this out? Did I? Yeah, there's still a little bit of e-liquid in there, folks. Yeah, there's a bit of e-liquid in here. It didn't come out the box like this, by the way. I've actually been using this uh, on and off, just comparing it to the original Dead Rabbit V1. So it looks like a mess in there. That's my fault because I didn't run it through the ultrasonic cleaner because I'm an idiot. But yeah, as you can see, there is a slight alteration going on with the air intakes going in. The whole premise of the dead rabbit was instead of pure side airflow or pure top airflow or pure bottom airflow, the original dead rabbit had the air coming in at an angle, which meant it hit the top of the coil at a 90 degree angle from where the air, well, in fact, it wasn't 90 degree. It was a 45 degree angle, that was a 45 degree angle from the direction of the airflow. It was something that wasn't done before with drippers and tanks and they've diffused it a little bit more with the tank, with the honeycomb system coming in. But as you can see, the honeycombs are on a 45 degree angle in the top of the chamber. But the most important part hasn't really changed much, I'll <laughs> be honest. Um, this is why I'm calling this the Dead Rabbit V1.2 RTA because normally if, if, if you're looking at a tank, to, to call a tank a version 2, right, which means it's completely separate from the first version of the tank that was released originally, something drastic has to have changed in that tank. It's why I've always said with the Kelpie RTA, if EH Pro wasn't in the version of going bankruptcy, bankruptcy I think they are, if there was going to be a Kelpie version 2 RTA, which I said there wouldn't be, because I've always said once the Kelpie mouth-to-lung tank came out, that's it. End of story. There's not going to be a V2. Because when I see a V2 tank or a V2 dripper, I expect some kind of major overhaul. But I'm, I'm not seeing it here, folks. I'm honestly not. There is a couple of... There's a couple of small changes that I've done to the air intake with regards to the cap of the dome. 
but the deck hasn't actually changed that much. So you've got the classic dead rabbit, well, the, the bunny ear thing going on here. You've got the classic dead rabbit RTA deck. They've changed the juice intakes because they've ledged it here, as you can see, to make it a little bit easier to work on. But nothing much else has changed. I'll be honest, um, this is why I've taken a little bit more time with this tank. Uh, a little bit more time with this tank with regards to... And I've just dropped something. No, I haven't. What was that noise? I don't fucking know. Anyway, this is why I've taken a little bit of time with this tank with regards to testing it out against the original Dead Rabbit RTA. But anyway, what we're going to do, we are going to pop a couple of coils in here. Let's lock the focus in. And I had a little jar of coils here somewhere. There they are. Nothing fancy. We're going to be popping in a couple of fused Claptons. This is what I normally use for tanks of this type. And we are going to be using... You don't need to use the coily tool, by the way, because Dead Rabbit, the posts are lifted up, so you can get in there with your snips underneath the post and clip your legs. But I find it a lot easier just cutting the legs. So all you people with the coily tool, I'll be cutting this to 4.5 millimeter to leave a little bit of a longer leg length to play around with here. Let's snip that and snip that. Put that there, 4.5 millimeter. And then once again, snip and snip. And now, cue the music. There we go, folks. That's the Dead Rabbit RTA V2 all coiled up, and I've just realised I forgot to put the cotton on the table because I'm an idiot. I do this all the bloody time. I either forget the scissors or forget the damn cotton. So, very easy to coil on with the Dead Rabbit because it's a top-mounted coil system. Very easy. What we're going to be using is cotton gods here. I usually use cotton gods for tanks because it's a really good wicking cotton. Not a sponsor, by the way. I did buy this. For the people that are wondering, you're always mentioning cotton gods, Vic, are they paying you? No, I actually bought that cotton myself. Right, so these are 2.5, they are, they're 2.5 millimetre coils, so I'm not going to go nuts with the cotton here, folks. I'm not. We need enough cotton to reach down. That's a long length of cotton that we're going to need here. So what we're going to do here is we are going to get this and then split that in half. Pop you off. Right, pinch and twist. But coiling the Dead Rabbit RTA is a lot like coiling the Dead Rabbit RDA. You've got to be very careful with the cotton. Very careful with the cotton because too much cotton in this. Um, you're going to be suffering from long break-in times with your cotton. Even with cotton gods, you're still going to be suffering a long break-in time. But you want enough cotton to reach behind that ledge, behind the ledge. The trick I do with this is pull the cotton down with your fingernail, push your fingernail in, and you'll see that dent there. And what you want to do is you want to cut your cotton just after the dent, the compressed bit that you've done. Get my scissors out. New scissors, because people kept complaining that the other ones looked blunt. So I popped onto Amazon and got myself a new set. Give that a snip. Then we do the same with the other side. Give that a snip. And then we just level this out just slightly. Now what we want to do is rake this because that's far too much cotton to stuff into that ledge system they've got going. So get your tweezers. And we want to give this a rake. Get rid of all of these loose strands. Pull them out. 
Same with the opposite side, pull them out, and we're going to be raking quite a bit of this cotton out. Again, just like the dead rabbit RD, we're going to be raking quite a lot of that cotton out. Once again, in with the scissors, tidy up the ends, just like that. Then we get our tweezers, and what we want to do is we want to lightly push. Now again, that ledge there's the important part, because we want to lightly push the cotton in, Behind that ledge, we're using the ledge as the way for the cotton to find its way down. So again, pushing the cotton in towards the ledge. We're not going to force the cotton down into the channel, but we're going to be forcing the cotton in behind the ledge, just like that. Then we're going to do the same with the opposite side. Just getting this cotton and then moving the cotton in behind the ledge. Just like that. And again with the scissors. And we clean this up a bit by getting rid of all of this excess cotton we've got here on the side. Then we get that excess cotton and we push it in towards the posts. Once again, pushing the cotton in behind the ledge. Now, what we should see here, if I pop this off and we go for a good close-up, a very good close-up, as close as I can possibly get this. Let's see if we can actually do it with that. That's slightly too close. In fact, you know what? Let's just cheat. We'll pull the zoom down and drop the focus in. Now, we didn't press the cotton down. We didn't do this and cram the cotton in. That's one way you can do it. Actually getting the cotton and pushing it down like that. But you run the risk if you over push the cotton which is what i done with this tank uh, during the coiling session for it uh, on the UK vape show. It was the quick and nasty method of wicking the dead rabbit RT, getting the cotton and pushing it down. If you push it in towards the coil, not down towards the deck, in towards the coil, so the cotton flips behind that ledge. I don't know if you'll see it. You might see it better. On, yeah, there we go. See that? There's a little tuft of cotton sticking out down there. And if we try and angle this a bit better, are you seeing it? Right there. There's tufts of cotton showing through. And that's the trick with these open juice wells, which is what this is. Big gaping open, big gaping hole behind that ledge, big gaping hole behind that ledge. Pushing the cotton in towards the coils rather than pushing it down towards the deck means the ends of the cotton finds its own way into the juice well. And that way, you're essentially not compressing the cotton and causing a dead spot in your cotton. And there we go, whoops, as he dropped the deck. That is the Dead Rabbit RTA version two, all coiled up, wicked up and ready to go. And I'm gonna pop this top cap back on. What you want to do is give it a wiggle. Give it a wiggle, you might see some cotton sticking through. Instead of just screwing it straight on, Unscrew it, give it a twist in the opposite direction as if you're unscrewing it and that should free any excess cotton from the threads. Screw it down and that's you ready to go. So there we go, that was the Dead Rabbit V2 RTE coiled up, wicked up and ready to go. Let's head back up top. So we're back up top with the Hell Vape Dead Rabbit V2 RTA. I've currently got this on the Q-Mini, running at a massive 45 watts because the coil's coming out at 0 0.22, and we're off. I can tell it's a dead rabbit, that is damn good flavour. Seriously. <laughs> it's a fucking... All the fucking... I'm not going to cut this bit out. Fuck it. Fucking all the damn time. Hold on. Let's put it on top of this big fella. The um, Cream Healed mod from the fine folks over at Vapefly. Uh, what are we running this at? We are running this at 75 watts now. 
it'll take it. It'll be just a bit on the hot side. Airflow control's fully open. Peach custard in here as well. That's rather toasty. That's what that is. One thing you can see, you cannot fault this thing for flavour. That was the up close and the personal of the Dead Rabbit V2 RT. What do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. Let's cut to the chase. Is it a good tank? Yes. Is there good flavour from it? Yes. Is it better than the Dead Rabbit V1 RTA? It's about the same. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest here. It's about the same. Um, the, <coughs> the major difference between the major difference between the old Dead Rabbit V1 RT, which I still use. I've got the Dead Rabbit, or one of the Dead Rabbit. I think I've got another one behind me on the shelf here. But I've got another Dead Rabbit V1 RT up at the house that I use now and again for creams and custards because the Dead Rabbit RT seems to lean a little bit more towards the deeper, richer notes of creams, custards, bakeries, that kind of thing. I don't usually run fruits through the Dead Rabbit RT. And this is the same. I tried it with fruits and it's kind of the same with the Dead Rabbit V1. So it's, it's not lacking in flavour when it comes to fruits, but it's slightly more toned down compared to something like the Intake, for instance, or the Kelpie, which I'm still using. Um, the major difference between the two tanks is all down to the way the outside of the tank looks. There is a definite difference between the looks of the V1 and the looks of the V2. The V2 is a little bit easier to fill because of the slidey top thing that's going on. The deck, which is the important part and more important, more important than that, the actual chamber where the deck is sitting in, there's only minor adjustments that went on to the update from the V2 compared to the V1. What you're essentially getting here is not so much a dead rabbit V2, it's more like a Dead Rabbit V1 second edition. Now, if I was Billy, and here's the thing, I don't know if Billy had much of a say, Vaping Heathen we're talking about, I don't know if Billy had much, in a, much of a say in this because there's no mention of Vaping Heathen on the tank itself. None. If we have a look at this tank again, we've seen it down in the table cam, but normally, normally when you have a look at a tank the designer's name is usually on the base. And if you have a look at the base of this tank, if it ever focuses in, if you have a look at the base of this tank, all you're seeing is the Hellvate logo and Dead Rabbit V2 RTA. Billy's name and logo is not, or what Billy's name and logo for his channel is not on the chamber. All you're seeing is the original Dead Rabbit Dead Bunny logo. The only mention of Heathen is a small logo that you can barely fucking see, but a small logo on the back of the box. I don't think Billy had much of a say in this. I honestly don't think he had much of a say in this tank because if I was Billy, right, if I was Vaping Heathen, and I had released a tank as successful as the Dead Rabbit V1 RTA, and I seen this, I would say, to hell vape, look, release the tank. It's a good tank, but don't call it the V2. Call it the V1 second edition and market it as a slight upgrade and overhaul based around the original version one. Because the whole point of V2 tanks, folks, the whole point of a V2 tank is something different from the original version one release. Something different that would give the end user something like a little bit more flavor, a little bit easier to wick, a little bit easier to fill. What you're getting with this is basically the V1 tank with slight alterations. That's what you're getting. However, I'm not saying it's a bad tank. I've got the peach custard in here and it's fucking phenomenal. Just like the original V1, it's phenomenal with the deeper, richer notes from creams, from custards, from bakeries, from savouries. With fruits, that's still its Achilles heel, just like the old V1 Dead Rabbit RTA. It's not lacklustre in fruits, but it's slightly lacking when it comes to the upper tones. But all of that is to do with the coil placement. Again, when it comes to the Dead Rabbit RTA, not so much the RDA, but with the RTA, you've got to get the coil placement absolutely spot on. If you get that coil placement even a little bit too high or a little bit too low, so the air coming in at an angle is not hitting the coils dead on, you're going to get muted flavour. 
just flat out muted flavour all the way through. Took me a couple of tries actually to get the coil level right on this tank because they have altered the airflow system. That's the, the old, from what I remember of the Dead Rabbit V1 RT, the airflow angle came in like that. That was a very steep angle. With the V2, it's been tilted up slightly. So don't use the same coil placement on the V2 that you used on the V1 because you're going to get muted flavour. You're going to get definitely muted flavour. But once you get the coil placement bang on, I can't fault this for flavour. For creams, custard, bakeries and savouries. Because that's all I've been running through this. Cannot fault this for flavour, it is damn good. So there we go. The up close personal and the review of the Dead Rabbit V2 RTA. Now, here's the big question. If you have a Dead Rabbit version 1, should you rush out and buy the V2? I'll be honest, no. No. Now, this, this is the reason. Where the fuck is it? Where is it? This fella, the Kelpie RT that I came out with about a year ago now, this is why there's not going to be a V2 Kelpie. Because I've, al I've always said when the, Kelpie, when the Kelpie range is done, when the original Kelpie run is done, there's not going to be a V2. Because the way I see it, if you're going to release a V2 of a tank, there's, th th there has to be some kind of tangible improvement in the flavour, at least in the flavour that the tank is making. With this design for the Kelpie, I couldn't figure out a way to make it better. I just couldn't. So the Kelpie tank came out and that's it, the Kelpie tank's dead because there's not going to be a V2. But with this, you are getting the same flavour, the same flavour that you get from the V1 RT as long as you get the coil placement right. The wicking is slightly easier, but not by much. They've stuck a ledge in and you just tuck the cotton behind the ledge and the tank is slightly easier to fill. But the V1 wasn't a problem to fill the tank. The V1 was not tricky to wick and the V1 was not tricky to coil on. And the V1 also gave damn good flavour. If you've still got the V1 and you haven't broke it, I'd keep with the V1. If, however, you didn't get the V1 RTA, you just skipped past the Dead Rabbit V1 RTA and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know what, I think I'll give a Dead Rabbit tank a try. Skip the V1 and get the V2 because the V2 is slightly easier to wick on, slightly easier to fill, and you're going to get the same flavour that you got from the V1 RTA, just with a slightly improved package. You're looking at the V1 second edition. That's what you're looking at. I wouldn't actually class this as a V2. I wouldn't class it as a V2. It's an improved version of the original tank, second edition. That's what I would have marketed this as. This is why I'm thinking Billy didn't have much of a say in this tank. He really didn't because his name is only one tiny blood logo on the back of the box. He doesn't even have his name on the tank. And that's that, that raised a couple of questions with me. It really did. Anyway. Oh. You put a custard through this. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. I might even retire the intake V2 because I've got the intake V2 on this trash heap of a desk right now. And that's what I've been running the peach custard through generally if I'm not using, uh, where the fuck is it? If I'm not using the uh, cream healed stock coil sub omer filled with peach custard, I've usually got the intake V2 sitting on top of this, but I'm tempted to retire the intake V2. Or is it the V2? Or was it the original intake? It's one of the intake tanks. Can't remember which one. I'm tempted to retire the intake and actually just use this. Because the flavour from this, when it comes to custards and creams, oh, this is good. That is seriously good. That was the Hell Vape Dead Rabbit V2 RTA. If you're a cream, custard, bakery, savoury fan, or you like to vape on the deeper, richer liquids, you might want to get your hands on this, especially if you don't have the V1 RTA. You might want to get your hands on this because I'm thoroughly enjoying this with a custard in it. Thoroughly enjoying it. Anyway. You can tell because I've almost vaped the tank dry during the review. That was the Dead Rabbit V2 RTA. Big thanks to the folks at Hellvate. 
for sending it over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do down below. Thought it was good, give it a thumbs up. Very first at the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. I mean, that's the latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the patrons, the subscribe stars, and the YouTube members for supporting Vic Vic financially. And underneath me is the Vic Mac logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.